Hi traders, back with another PineScript video. In today's video, we're going to be revisiting debugging in PineScript. So today's video is going to be a bit of a recap on the previous debugging video, but I still think you'll find it extremely valuable. So stick around even if you watched the previous video. We're going to cover some new things that I didn't cover in the previous video. And the script I'm going to show you today is really, really cool. It's an extremely valuable tool. So a couple of weeks ago, I released a video on my channel exploring various methods for debugging your scripts. And one of the subscribers to my mailing list sent me an email, thank you, Justin, uh, making me aware of this really incredibly valuable tool created by a PineScript coder who goes by the name, uh, he who must not be named, and uh, obviously a Harry Potter fan. And he's written this script that creates a logging feature. So what you see down here is a print log. And this is printing text onto my screen, much like the PineScript editor does down here. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video on debugging, I highly recommend it because we do cover some interesting and useful techniques in that video as well. But in this video, I'm showing you a much quicker way to go about debugging things such as for loops. And using this new um, script that Justin sent me, or made me aware of, we can now much more easily debug things like for loops. Now, before we begin, I wanna address something that I said incorrectly in the previous debugging video. I mentioned how it wasn't possible to plot data onto the chart without it showing up in the status line. So this is the status line up here. And I, I mentioned that if you want to display things in the data window here, you have to plot the numbers onto your chart with a title, but the plot will show up on your status line, which is annoying when you have a lot of plots because these status line numbers can plot right off your chart. Well, a subscriber to the channel, Waldus, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, made me aware of this feature that I somehow missed last year. It's been in PineScript for a year, so I apologize for that. I, had, I, I somehow missed this, uh, these release notes from July last year where you can actually specify where you want your plots to display, which is um, really cool. So let's just quickly cover this before we move on because this is uh, important on the subject of debugging. So let's say we want to display our plots everywhere except on the status line. So now we can use this new display.all minus the display.status line, and this will display the plots information every, everywhere except in the script's status line, which is amazing. So let's go do this really quick. Let's open up the source code. If you're not familiar with this script, this is the script I worked with in the previous lesson where I introduced you guys to a brand new feature of PineScript called methods. So go and check out how to use methods in PineScript, that video, there'll be a link in the top right here somewhere to that video if you haven't seen it. But the script we used for today's lesson is not important. You can use any of your scripts and code along if you want to. Uh, but anyway, let's scroll up to where I plot my information. Let's say we wanna see this data in the data window, but we don't want it drawing onto our chart, which in this case we don't because this is drawing EMA values from different markets. And we wanna see these EMA values in the data window, but we don't want them plotting onto our price chart. So we can now use the new display equals, if I paste that code in there, I copy that and paste it on the rest of these plots, save my code. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I hope it works. <laughs> there we go. It's no longer drawing in the status window. So that's how we plot data onto the chart without it displaying in the status line, but also displaying in the data window. If we only want the data to display in the data window, such as in this case where we have these EMAs, uh, we don't want them plotting on our chart. We don't want them plotting into the status line, but we do want them plotting here. To achieve that, we can change this to display equals display dot data window. And now if I copy this and paste it down here, save my scripts, these plots should disappear from here and here, but still remain in the data window. There we go, amazing. Thank you so much, Waldus, for making me making me aware of this feature. I'll be using this a lot in the future for sure. Uh, one final thing I also want to mention before we move on is that when you're debugging scripts, you can also use alert functionality. So just um, add alerts to your script that send a string either to your email or just in the alert window. And then you can actually copy and paste that string if you need to do something with the data outside of TradingView. And finally, one other thing you can do that I forgot to mention in the previous debugging video is export your chart data to an Excel spreadsheet that will include all of your plot values for each candle. Now this feature is only available for premium um, subscribers to TradingView's platform. But if you open up this menu here and come down to export chart data and click export, there you go. You have an Excel spreadsheet with all of our uh, different EMA values. This is another tool we can use for debugging what our script is doing on each candle. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the core of today's lesson where I will introduce you to this new logging library that was created by he who must not be named. So here is the published 
script on TradingView. I'll leave a link below in the video description to this script. It's really easy to use. You can see down here that it's got several different levels for each message. So you have just general info, you have warnings, errors, fatal errors. Um, there's also trace. And to use this script is really, really easy. We just need to copy this code here, jump into our script. And then I like to do this at the top of my script. You don't have to, you can paste this in anywhere, but I recommend doing it at the top of your script just so you know uh, what libraries your script is working with. Now I've covered libraries before on the channel, but not for quite some time. So I'll quickly explain what we're doing here. We're importing he who must not be names logger library and the version is one. Now he's updated the script to version two. So I'll change that one to two. And he's giving this library an alias of L. That's not a one, it looks like a one, but it's actually L short for logger. So I'll just change this to log real quick. So it's a little bit easier to read. And then he's creating a VAR persistent variable called logger. And this logger is set to log library alias dot logger type dot new. So we're creating a new logger type. And then this logger type has some methods included in it. The first one is init. So we need to call this before we do anything with this logger. And this will initialize our logger window that we'll draw down here in the bottom right. And we're good to go. So before we start logging things onto the chart, I'll just go over the different parameters we have to work with, with this script or library. So the first parameter here is position. This is where to draw the table or the log. Then we have page size. So that's how many um, strings or lines of text draw in this table. Then we have max entries. That's the maximum number of entries we can have in our logger. Then we have page number. I'll go over what that is once we're logging things onto the chart. Then we have text size, text color. Show only last means do you want to display the logger only if we're on the final bar of our chart. Then we have minimum level. So this specifies the minimum level of log to show on our chart. So you can see here in this example, we're setting the min minimum level to debug. So the logger will only show messages that have a priority of debug or higher. So if we go back to the page here, we have trace, debug, info, warn, error, and fatal. So if we set the minimum level to debug, then we're not going to see any messages that were using the trace method. We're only gonna see these ones. And if I set it to infos, the minimum level, then we'd only see info and down. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. Then we have real time, which means is the logger being drawn on a real time bar or not? This should be set to true if we're dealing with an indicator, like in our case, and it should be set to false if you're working with a strategy script. And these final two parameters here, we don't need to touch. These will be created by the library script when we call the uh, new function here or method. So let me get rid of this for now. And let me show you how to log something. So I'll just write here, test log, logger dot. And now when you import a library and you use the dot notation, so you write out your type here and then a full stop control space, this gives you the list of methods we have to work with. And there aren't that many. It's a really nice, lean, efficient library script. It's no wonder that he who must not be named is in the Pine Scriptors Hall of Fame. He's a great scripter, writes really clean, really efficient code that is really powerful. Now, for some reason, it doesn't list the uh, different methods here we have for actually logging. So let me copy this and paste this in here and I'll save my script and let's have a look at what happens down here. There we go. We're getting some test logs drawing. Now, for the most part, I doubt you're going to need to use all of these different trace levels. It's a great feature to have. Most integrated development environments, most advanced scripting environments will have these different levels to work with. I imagine that's why the author included all of these, but you don't need to use them all. You could just use info if you wanted to or whichever one you find easiest to read color-wise. So if I get these, get rid of these, and I just say, this is a test log, save my code. Now you can see this message down here. So the first column here, this first number is the index of the log string. So it'll start from zero and count upwards from there. The second number here is your bar index, the bar index that this table is drawing on or this log message was made on. Then we have the date and time if you're on a lower time frame. So if we go down to a one hour chart, it will also show the bar time, the open time of the bar that we're on. And then we have our uh, trace level here. And then the message, the string that we want to write onto the chart. So you can already see just how powerful this is. With four lines of code, we are drawing whatever text we want onto the chart from anywhere in our script. We could be using this function inside our for loop to 
print out what our for loop's doing. We could have it inside a, a method, a custom function, inside if statements and conditional statements. It's a really versatile and powerful feature to have in your scripts, especially complex scripts that have a lot of moving parts and you wanna track what your script is doing and ensure that it's doing what you intend it to do. And if it's not, you can use this logger to isolate the problem uh, and reverse engineer what the bug is. So before we continue, let's try something really quickly. Let's uh, log logger.info bar index equals, uh, actually we already know the bar index on the logger. Let's say bar open equals, and now we still need to use the string dot two string library method to convert numbers into text when, when using this logger. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, when I save this code, let's have a look at what the logger does. So what's happening here is the logger is only running on the last bar on our chart, on the current real-time bar or the final historical bar if the market is closed. And so we're only printing one log to the logger. But if I change this parameter here, the show only last equals false, now we're not using the logger only on the final bar on our chart. If I save my code now with this parameter set to false, this logger.info method will be called on every bar on my chart. And so when I save my code now, we should be getting a fully populated logger array full of text from every bar on my chart. There we go. So by default, we have 10 uh, as our page size. So I can change that if I want to. Let me change this to uh, page size equals 20. Now we should have 20 messages drawing into our logger, like so, counting from zero all the way to 19. Now the logger will show the most recent message that went in first. So zero will be the most recent uh, bar open. If you wanna see uh, a few bars back, you can specify the page number. So if I set page number equals 10, now we'll be displaying the logger from 10 pages ago. So 200 bars ago until the 219th bar. So if you're debugging a bar, you know, 200 bars ago, let's count back 200 bars, 200, if I put a vertical line there and I hover my mouse over this bar, you can see the open price there, 06242, 06242. So this is how you can debug uh, information in the past. So if your script's doing something funky 200 bars ago, you can just do some quick math to figure out how many pages back you need to go with this logger and you can see what your script was doing then. So just a couple more things before I wrap up this lesson, let's uh, demonstrate how to display an error message. So let's say our script, uh, let's say this EMA array should have seven elements in it. And if it doesn't, we wanna be notified that there's a problem. Um, this is just an arbitrary example. But let's say that uh, if EMA array dot size is not equal to seven, then we want to print an error that says EMA size not equal seven, size equals and then I can copy that into here, save my code. And now we'll be getting an error message um, on every bar in our chart because this if statement will be true on every bar in our chart. But if it wasn't, then we'd get our message in here. So let's say n bar state dot is last. And let's add in a couple of uh, regular info messages, test info, save my code. Uh, let me get also get rid of uh, these two parameters here. And now you can see that on the last bar in our chart, we got an error message drawing and you can see these two bar indexes are the same. So we're drawing test info or logging text info on every bar in our chart. But if there's an error on the last bar in our chart that also draws into the log. And yeah, hopefully you can see how powerful and useful this feature is. A couple more things, let's do a debug message. So let's come down to our for loop. So inside this for loop, let's say we want to check what this for loop's doing. So first of all, let's get the I index from our first for loop. So I can say I plus string dot two string I. And then let's also get the J index of our second for loop. So J plus string dot two string J. Um, and I'll change this to debug just to demonstrate the different levels. And then I'm going to split this onto a new line here and I'll say swap. And let's just put in some values here. Let's say uh, we're swapping I with the element at J. Now this for loop, if you're not aware, is um, sorting our array. So we need two for loops to cycle through all of the elements in our array and swap whichever ones are not. Um, if we're sorting in ascending order, we wanna swap all the elements so that the smallest values are at the top and the largest values are at the bottom. So here I can say, we are swapping source array dot get, whoops, uh, i dot ticker with 
source array dot get j dot ticker. And now I need to move this debug message above the part where our script actually swaps these elements. Otherwise this information will be incorrect. So before we swap the elements, we log this to our logger. So now if I save my code, this should compile. There we go. And now the debug message isn't displaying here. So I think I might need to change minimum level equals trace. And there we go. So by default, the debug message level is hidden. So you need to set minimum level to trace if you want to see all of the different log levels. And now we can see what our for loop is doing. Um, let me get rid of show only last because right now this is logging every for loop for all the bars on our chart and this looks a bit messy. So let's just see what it's doing on the final bar on our chart. Let's get rid of that. Let's also add in some EMA values here so that we can actually see what values are getting swapped around. So I'll put in brackets here, string dot two string source array i dot EMA value with, and then let's swap this onto a new line and close that off and then add on this. And I'll just copy this code here and change this to J, save my code. And now we should be getting less information because we're only debugging the final bar on our chart and we're getting the EMA values as well. Now we're getting a lot of decimal places too. I'm not gonna show you how to format strings in today's lesson because I've covered that in previous lessons and it's not important for today. But anyway, you can now see that the for loop I index zero and the for loop J index three has swapped Euro dollar with this EMA value here with New Zealand dollar. And this is a lower number. So it swapped the position in the array of Euro dollar 1.06 as the EMA value with a smaller EMA value. And it's done that for all of the elements in our for loop. And so if our for loop was doing something we didn't want it to, we could read this text here and see what's going on. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this video short because this isn't exactly rocket science. You can go and play around with the script yourself. It's very easy to use as you can see only three lines in order to get it into your script. And then once it's in your script, you can just use the logger.info or whatever other level you want to write some debug text and see what's going on under the hood of your script. So I hope you found this video helpful and valuable and interesting. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot if you're not subscribed. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for being part of this family. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. Uh, I wish you all the best with your trading and your coding and I'll speak with you in the next lesson. As I said, links to the script will be below. Take care.